going to Sturgis, South Dakota, where here in just a few short weeks, the biggest motorcycle rally in the world is going to be taking place. I couldn't think of a more perfect place to test out my brand new DJI Osmo Action 4. So in this video, we're gonna be hitting some of the most beautiful highways, testing out the best roadside food stops and having as much fun with this camera as possible. Okay, so up here we have a lot of wind noise, we got some music in the background, some uh, road traffic driving by, but I do think the in-camera wind noise reduction works pretty good, and uh, personally, I think the audio sounds a lot better than uh, competitive action cameras. It was very fun recording with this thing, but now it's time to put it to the test. Can it actually handle motovlogging? There's only one way to find out. So since it is very hot in South Dakota right now, I'm probably gonna be doing most of this vlogging with the visor open. So that's gonna give you a lot of wind noise, a lot of very interesting sounds, and hopefully it will be a true test of what this camera's capabilities are. So first things first, if you guys are interested in using this camera as a moto vlog camera, you are going to need a microphone adapter. I can personally tell you, uh, with vlogging with the camera without an external mic hooked up, I've been pleasantly surprised with how crisp and quality the audio sounds. Um, we're gonna have to find out what this setup sounds like because I'm just not so sure. I've never used a mic adapter like this and I really hope it's a, a good fit, you know? All right, wind noise test. tricky to test the wind noise on this because I have a full fairing motorcycle. <laughs> All right, I closed my visor. Hopefully the mic isn't peaking too much. Hopefully you can hear my voice as crisp and clear as possible because let me tell you what guys, that is half the battle is just trying to get quality audio on these damn moto vlogs. <laughs> so while I'm sitting here testing the audio with you guys, I'm just going to go ahead and briefly talk about some of the things that I have liked and disliked about this camera specifically. I've personally been a GoPro user for the past uh, almost decade. Uh, I've been using GoPro since before I started a YouTube channel and they have always been just slightly off the mark. Truly like so close to being absolutely perfect. And that makes me super happy to think that there are companies out there like DJI that are taking the feedback and seeing the issues people are having and they're working on improving them. And the number one thing I can tell you right now, for what I've seen from this camera currently, I've been testing this camera for five days, you guys. You know, when DJI hit me up and said, hey, we would like you to test out our new camera and show your audience, I jumped, absolutely jumped at the opportunity because I'm sick and tired of not being able to rely on my video footage. So, so far, I think the audio quality outside of moto vlogging, as well as the image quality has been amazing. 100% 10 out of 10 can recommend. It is either as good, if not better than the leading competitor. I'm personally shooting in 4K 60 frames per second right now. This camera shoots up to 120 frames per second. 
I will never shoot at this high of resolution for the types of videos that I make. You guys, this is a vlog. I'm riding a motorcycle. You don't need to see the most in-depth, personable, like extreme depth of field, beautiful cinematography when all I'm doing is riding across the country and chat, chit chatting to you in my helmet, you know? I'm here to tell a good story and I need my camera to be able to pick up on that story and visually show you guys what we're working with. Right now it's big open fields. So 100% I can tell you for the price you are gonna pay for this camera versus the most popular competitor right now, which is GoPro. We're not even gonna throw the other competitor into this because that action camera, if you know what I'm talking about, cannot hold a candle to either of these. So between the DJI and the GoPro, if you're looking at price, I would go with this one, $100 cheaper and you get the exact same qualities without just the crazy popularity and name brand. So I, I truly wish this camera would have come out before my last GoPro corrupted on me because I probably would have bought this one instead. Something else that I love about this camera is the fact that you can take it out of the protective case. It's still an action camera. You don't need the protective case to film with it, unlike the media mod. And my favorite thing, I'm telling you guys right now, the number one thing I hate the most about the damn media mod is you cannot take the camera out while it is still hooked up to your helmet. So what my favorite thing about this is you have a magnetic quick release mounting system. So what that means is you can magnetically attach the mounting hardware either horizontally or vertically on the camera and it just easily detaches. I have been filming with this camera for over five days and there has been nothing that has made the magnetic quick release anywhere close to detaching. The way it latches on is it magnetically latches on and you can only take it off if you press the two tiny side buttons. So that right there, game changer, fit and finish. They are paying attention. They're listening to our complaints and I think it's amazing. I have truly, truly loved it so much. I have taken a look back at the visual quality of the camera. And like I said, I'm not gonna shoot in 4K all the time, but it's perfection. If I had to choose and I have compared the GoPro 11 to this DJI Osmo Action 4, I, don't, I really think the DJI Osmo Action 4 has a better in-camera image quality. You guys know, I do moto vlogs. I'm not out here filming cinematic stuff. So I need the camera to do 99% of the work for me. That means I need automatic color balance, automatic white balance. I need the camera to pick up on when it's too low light to film. If you guys know me, you know if it's nighttime, I'm not filming. If I'm on the motorcycle, I am not filming while I'm riding because my GoPro cannot pick up on the low light. This camera has absolutely blown my mind with the low light capabilities. I've taken it to a few different places and tested it out. We went to a museum here in Deadwood, South Dakota, and that was such a moody, ominous, beautiful low light to showcase the exhibitions that they had. And the camera performed flawless. You could not tell that it was low light in there. And then immediately after we left there, I wanted to go test it at a different location. So we went to a casino. No, I, I don't gamble. But we went to the casino and it was incredibly dark in there. And I had fun playing with the neon signs and moving the camera around. And it performed flawless. The low light is absolutely stunning on this camera. And that makes it really nice because especially if I go do motorcycle camping, if it gets even remotely twilight outside, I can't film, I can't shoot. My cameras don't pick up on the low light. So that's something I've been stoked about. This camera shoots in low light. It also shoots in slow-mo and in time-lapse. And if you think that I haven't been playing with the clouds time-lapse or the sunset time-lapse, you're delusional because those are my favorite things to film. <laughs> time-lapses are, they're always gonna get me stopping in my tracks and watching the video. I did have some fun testing this camera underwater. That is one thing I don't typically do with my action cameras because they're hooked up to my helmet. I ain't riding my motorcycle in water unless I'm swimming. Oh, and please note, if you are using your action camera as a moto vlog, setup 
do not ride through rain. The door, the little side door where the mic adapter goes is open. It is not waterproof. So just know that's on any action camera. If you have to connect an external mic, it is not waterproof. I don't want anyone to buy this camera and then fry it the first time they ride through the rain. But if the little side door is shut, 100% waterproof. You don't need the special case for it. You don't need to do anything different. You can dunk it in the water and it comes out perfectly fine. So we had an amazing time riding through Spearfish Canyon and putting the camera down into the water. And I was really sad. I didn't see any cute little critters down there, but blown away at the image quality and how beautifully crystal clear that water looked on camera. Of all places, you would see somebody blowing grass into the road. It's not a motorcycle campground. That's disappointing. What you doing, lady? Go the opposite direction, jeez. Some things I do not like about this camera. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I don't like how hard it is to press the record button. If you're anything like me, you're on the motorcycle, you don't have a lot of time to mess around with the camera, so I need to just reach up as quickly as possible, turn it on, and get my job done. Uh, it has been challenging. I do, I do, I will say, it's, it's hard to press that button. Another thing, this camera comes with ND filters, so ND lenses, which is neutral density lenses, which if you're out here in beautiful South Dakota and it's always sunny, you're probably going to need a neutral density lens to help flatten out the highs and the lows of the lighting. Unfortunately, they don't screw on to the camera. So I was messing with my camera the other day while riding through Spearfish and totally, totally lost it. It flew off into the wind. Goodbye, Felicia, forever. So out of those two complaints, those are really the two main complaints. I wish the ND filter screwed on and I wish the record button was a little easier to press. I will say it turns on incredibly fast and the battery life, holy smokes, I cannot believe how long the battery life lasts in this camera. They're even regulated for extreme heat, which is rad because I have been riding in some of the hottest temperature days the past few days. I think the longest I had it record all the way through without an external mic hooked up, without a bunch of crazy things happening, I believe it recorded for almost an hour straight through. I was blown away. But then if your camera, if your battery does die, you accidentally leave it on, which I've done that a lot because it's hard to press the on off button. It comes with a quick charge pack. So I have three batteries that I put into this little case, close it up, plug it in, and it quickly charges all three batteries. So I truly have not had any issue with the battery life. On top of all the other amazing accessories you can get with this camera, it's also highly capable with every other aftermarket action camera accessory. So what I have with this kit right now, I have the selfie stick that you can make an invisible selfie stick. I've been using that more than anything, honestly. I also have the chest mount, which feels so comfortable. I'm not used to using chest mounts because I put these things on my helmet. But when I was walking around with it strapped to my chest, I literally couldn't feel it. And I really, really liked the perspective that it gave me. You also get this fancy dancy wrist mount, which like, I mean, that would be cool if I had it on right now and rode. But yeah, I you put it on your wrist, you can carry it around, pointing at things, kind of look like Iron Man a little bit. I was digging it. And there are a million and one accessories that you can add on to this camera. But for me personally, as a motorcyclist, I need two things. I needed to be able to record steady and have good audio. So let's talk about the actual image quality. I'm using 4K 60 frames per second ultra wide view and I'm not using a locked horizon. So this camera comes automatically with image stabilization. And I mean, I could be looking all over the place and moving my head around and being a hoonigan, but uh, it's gonna look good in camera. I personally do not put the horizon lock on my camera because it looks kind of weird if you're on a motorcycle and you're leaning into the corners. If you can't see the horizon, it's kind of hard to tell where we're leaning. So I personally don't use that, but it does come with the camera. Okay, editing Jess here. Welcome to my home away from home. I'm still in Sturgis, but uh, final thoughts on my first impressions of this camera. I have a lot of adjusting to do when it comes to the Moto Vlog settings. Um, the thing that's really impressive about this, this is the first action camera I've used where you can actually control the gain of the microphone. So I'll be playing around with that, testing it out, and I'm obviously gonna keep you guys posted in future Moto Vlogs. After filming with this camera for the past six days, I can confidently say I'm probably going to make the full-time switch to the DJI Osmo Action 4. When you compare this camera side-by-side -side with the leading competitor, 
it is an absolute no-brainer that this is the way you want to go, especially when it comes to the price. I'm sorry, but getting this much in an action camera for $100 cheaper than the GoPro, yeah. I kind of wish I knew this was coming out. <laughs> so obviously if you guys have any questions, leave a comment down below. I would love to answer your question. My main questions from my Discord was the battery life and the audio quality while moto vlogging. Like I said, I'm gonna keep working on that one. Huge thank you to DJI for sending me this camera and I can't wait to see the places we get to go together. All right, well, thank you guys so much for watching this video and until my next one, you be good, ride motorcycles, and I'll see you later.